Hey, this is Ralph. In this video, I want to continue working on this uh, uh, the content portion of our final exam. This is a demonstration solution for that. And basically, I'm focusing my attention on this on these six blocks here. And I'm probably just going to demonstrate a couple of them because if we can do two of them, then certainly you could do six of them. And uh, basically, yeah, I've just got some nice background images, and there's a little hover effect which is described in the directions, which is hard to see. But let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now, I did go ahead and download a couple of pictures from unsplash.com, so I'd have some uh, uh, royalty-free images to use. So I've just got a couple that I can play around with to use on our example. Here's my page so far. In the last video, I was working on the uh, uh, header sidebar over here with the nav menu. Now I want to mess around with these six blocks. I'm probably just going to mess with two of them. I'll pick on block number two and block number three, So since those are you know just... A little bit different, but the same techniques would be used for all of them. So let's jump over to my page. Now I already have my images saved to my desktop, which is where I'm saving everything else. Everything's poorly organized. I'm just throwing them on the desktop. But let's go ahead and work on this a bit. Now if I look at the HTML, I can see that I've got these main blocks. Now earlier I gave special classes to blocks 5 and 6 so that they could disappear for phones. So that was back on the layout demonstration solution. But I'm working on a couple more, so I'm going to go ahead and create, uh, here's box two and box three. So basically I'm adding additional classes to these two divs so that I can manipulate them individually. So they share the main blocks class, but independently there's a box two and a box three class now so that I can style those. As an example, let's try this out. I can head up to my rules. I need to go up to my main desktop rules. And I've got box two. And let's just do this box two here. And I'm going to set the background image URL. And I don't have any subfolders or anything like that. So I can just put in, I called it very creatively, box2.jpg. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this real quick, paste it box3 and box3.jpg. Let's just see what happens here. Save this, browser refresh, refresh, and we can see what happens. And something's not happening, so I must have a mistake, certainly. So let's see, I've got my Film Festival 3.html. Let's make sure this is saved in an appropriate spot. Save as. I am saving to my desktop, Film Festival 3.html. Save and save. Just doing a quick check of my syntax here. Everything's looking pretty good, too. Box two and box three. Box two and box three. Those are classes. Ah, my problem is my file names. That's right. I call these film two and film three. Got to use the right file names. Refresh, and there we go. Ah, so now those images are showing up. Okay, but it's hard to see them all. But the good news is, is I can style them in a pretty similar way. So basically, all of my boxes here, main blocks, I can style these in very, very similar ways. Oh wait, I've already got a rule for main blocks, don't I? There it is. It's right up there at the top. So I don't need to repeat that again. If I've already got a rule for main blocks, I can just head up here and I can say for all of these main blocks, all six of them, I want the background position to be centered, center, center. And I'm also going to do a background size of cover. Control S to save, browser refresh. And that's going to size those background images equally so that they're filling up the space nicely. And if they were bigger, they're going to be centered either vertically or horizontally as necessary. So that kind of takes care of that part. Now the other issue that I need to deal with is I need these to be hyperlinks. These things are going to be big hyperlinks with some big chunky white text here. And when I hover over these hyperlinks, I want to kind of fade that image out and I want the text to get brighter. So I'm definitely going to need something going on in those particular uh, divs. For instance, I need some anchors in there. And you know, I could do these to all of them, but I'm just messing around with blocks two and three, so I'll just mess around with blocks two and three. Anchor href equals dummy hyperlink, and I can just put in some random text. And then I will copy that and paste it into box three. Make that just a little bit wider. I don't want to make my font too tiny, but I just wanted you to see that now I've got anchors 
within those divs. Let's see what we can do with this now. I'm going to go ahead and do a control S to save, browser refresh so we can visualize it. And of course, my anchors by default are blue and underlined. And of course, by default, they are in the top left corner. So I want to, I want to change that anchor text. And I also want those anchors to fill up the space. So let's do a few things. Now, I'm going to be manipulating here anchors that are a descendant of my main blocks. Okay, I don't want to work, worry just on box two and box three, because we're going to pretend that there's anchors in all of these. But anchors that are within my main blocks. So I can head up here. There's my main blocks. Main blocks space A. Descendant selector for the anchors. And I want these anchors to be display block. Basically, anchor is an inline element. I want to make it into a block element. And when I do that, I can set the width to be 100% and I can set the height to be 100%. What that means is my anchor is now going to fill up that block. So when I refresh this, notice I can put my cursor anywhere into this little block now, and it's a hyperlink hand. Same thing for this up here, number two. So I filled up those blocks with those anchors. Now for the text. Text is going to be a little bit different. Um, and I kind of give you a clue in the directions when I say to position. So I'm going to try something a little bit different here. I'm going to head down to where my anchors are, and I am going to enclose the text within a set of span tags. There we go. I'm going to do that to both. And if you recall, the span is like an inline version of div. Let me go ahead and put these on separate lines just so it stands out a little bit better to you. There we go. So within my divs, there's an anchor. Within my anchors, there is a span, which contains the actual hyperlink text. OK, now just putting those spans in is going to do absolutely nothing, because span is an inline element, so it looks just the way it does before. The anchor is still a block. But what's kind of neat about this is I can style those spans somewhat independently of the anchors. So if I go to my main blocks anchor, I can do something like this. Check this out. I'm going to do position relative. That's going to have no impact, but it's going to make it easy when I want to manipulate those spans. Check this out. Main blocks. Am I spelling everything? Anchor span. So the spans are descendants of the anchors. The anchors are descendants of the main blocks. I'm going to take those spans and I'm going to display them as block. I know I'm making a lot of stuff block elements. I'm going to make those into block elements. Not that I really need to. Okay, I'm going to hold off on that. I'm not going to make them into block elements. But let's do this so that you can see them. I'm going to set their font size to 1.25 M's and their color to be uh, what do I, want? I want them to be kind of gray, actually. So I will do uh, <clears throat> 555. Five, five. That's a gray, kind of a dark gray. I'm going to make it a lighter gray. How about 888? That's a medium gray. I'm pretty happy with that. You should notice it. And let me go ahead and do a font weight bold. All right, I'm digging that. And I'm going to jump up here to this anchor. I'm going to do text decoration none. I don't think I want any of that underlined. So let's see, refresh that. And those are a little bit bigger, not as big as I was hoping. So let me uh, jump this up to two M's. Refresh. There we go. Now it's a little bit more noticeable. And let me make it a little bit more, a little lighter. And I'll make these uh, BBD. Okay, so now we can clearly see that hyperlink text. But that's not where I want the hyperlinks hypertext link to be. I want it to be, I didn't tell you where, but in the directions I kind of showed in the lower right. I definitely didn't want it to be in the top top left though, because I knew that's where it was going to be by default. So what I'm going to do, since I've already got position relative on the anchors, the spans, I can now do as a position absolute. This will be kind of neat, because now that I'm positioning those spans absolutely, I can say I want them to be eight pixels from the bottom and eight pixels from the right. 
and that's going to take that text and put it in the lower right of those particular blocks. Excellent. I'm going to make this text even bigger. This 3M's crazy. Not crazy enough. Okay, pretty happy with that. Now, what about the hover effect? When I hover over these, I want the image to kind of get darker, faded out, and I want the text to get brighter, nice and bright white. So I need to manipulate some things when I hover. Check this out. Main blocks A colon hover. Now, the way I'm doing this is really dependent on the way I've set it up. And there's there's always three or four ways to do everything right. And so the way you may have done this in your final exam may be a little different than what I did, which means my techniques might be a little different. So this is just one method. Now recall that the background image is on the, uh, is on the div, okay? It's on that block. My anchor is kind of like a piece of transparency film on top of that block. So when I hover over the anchor, I can set the background color and I can do something semi-transparent, like I'll do uh, RGBA. And if I want to go dark, I can do something uh, super dark. Um, I can do 0, 0, 0. That's going to be black. And then I can set some transparency on this. I'll just do a 0.5. Control S to save. Browser refresh. So when I hover over these, see how that image gets a little bit darker? Now if I change this number, by the way, I could set this number closer to 1. 0.9 is very close to 1. It might be too dark. So when I refresh, there it is. It's so black you can hardly see it. I can just see it through there. And of course, if I go too light, you're not going to notice the effect so much. Yeah, it's hardly noticeable at all. So I'm going to go back to uh, 0.5. There we go. So that's noticeable that something is happening. But I want the text to get lighter. So here's a way I can kind of do that. Um, main blocks, a colon hover, and then the span text. So when I'm hovering over the anchors, what, this, what do I want the span to do? That's the text for the actual anchor. Well, I want that color to be nice and bright white. So I'll just change the color of that text to FFF, which is bright white. Control S to save. Browser refresh. There we go. So the background image gets dark and the text gets nice and light. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I don't think I asked you to do it on the exam. In fact, I know I didn't ask you to do it. But if you wanted to, we could also put a little transition effect. Transition. I'll change all, although it's only just the background color that's going to change here. Um, let's see. 300 milliseconds. No, that's too fast. Yeah, no, no. That's a third of a second. 300 milliseconds, and I'm going to do... Uh, ease in out. Control S to save, browser refresh. So now when I hover over, there we go, that background color changes gradually. Now my text color is actually ch is, ch is changing fast, instantaneous. It's hard to tell. That's just because I need to have this transition in a couple places. So I'll do copy that. Transition is on the anchor, but I'm also going to do the transition on the span. Refresh that. There we go. So now things are a little bit smoother. <coughs> And that's basically what I was looking for there, is that you could have some background images on these and then manipulate, make these hyperlinks nice and large. So if I was looking at the directions, that's kind of what was going on. I also wanted to ask that you put an HTML entity on there, so you just do a Google search for that. I used an umlaut, um, just so that I could see that you could put a special character in. But that is the gist of that particular part of the exam. So yeah, yeah. So. How's it looking? It's looking fine. And of course, the way we've done the styling, it should be the same. So here's desktop, there's tablet, everything's, everything's still fine, nothing's really changed. And of course on phone, it's just that we lose a couple of those blocks down at the bottom, but we still have those up here. Now my fonts are a little bit too big, it's probably worth correcting. So let's go ahead and take care of that before, I'm, before I finish up. Now my font size is being controlled Where is it at? Here it is, main blocks A span. I'm going to go ahead and copy this rule. And I'm going to go, let's see, do I want to change it for tablet? Let me just double check. Actually, tablet's probably pretty okay. I think that font size is fine there. Let's make it smaller for phone. So I'm going to move down to my phone styles. 
and paste, indent, let me indent all of these. Okay, so instead of three M's, let me try two M's. Now remember, when I copy a rule like this into a media query, I only want to keep things that I'm going to change. Well, I'm not ch you know, changing much, so I can get rid of practically everything on here. The only thing I'm changing is the font size. Control S to save, browser refresh. Let's go to phones. Font size is clearly smaller. It seems to fit in there okay especially at 375, which is the most common minimum phone width. So yeah, I think we can call that good. And of course, tablets, it, the text is bigger, and desktops, text is bigger. Okay, so that takes care of the middle part of the content portion of our final exam. And then I guess in the last one, I'll just mess around with the footer. There's a couple elements going on in that footer, so let's check it out.